The Netherlands are a safe and prosperous nation. Our economy is the 16th in the world. We are an important hub for trade and transportation flows. The Dutch are active all across the world. And for our security, we can count on the support of NATO and the EU. But this security and prosperity cannot be taken for granted. They have to be deserved in a world that is changing rapidly. Old threats disappear and new ones emerge. Technological developments accelerate. This creates both opportunities and threats. Economic and political power balances are shifting. Our climate is warming up and natural resources are becoming more scarce, while the world population continues to grow. Our armed forces make a significant contribution to the security and prosperity of our country. But what kind of armed forces do we need in the coming years? What are our options? What do we have to prepare for? To get a better handle on our future armed forces, the Dutch government conducted explorations into the future. The Future Policy Survey looked 20 years ahead. It is clear that much is about to change in the world. Some developments are probable, but how do they affect each other? There are also many unanswered questions. Tomorrow's world is characterized by more uncertainty. How to deal with this uncertainty is the challenge. The future cannot be predicted, but we can imagine it. This is why the Future Policy Survey developed four scenarios. They are structured around two key questions. Question one, which players will be important in the next 20 years? Will they be mostly state or non-state actors, like multinationals, NGOs, small groups or individuals, with good intentions or bad ones? Question two, how will actors relate to one another? Will we mostly work together in the world or will we confront each other? Will we behave in cooperative or non-cooperative ways? These two questions are critical to the future of our security and well-being and for the future of our armed forces. That's why they lie at the heart of the scenarios. In the multilateral scenario, states have, through trial and error, further developed the system of global governance. No world government, but still more cooperation. Many challenges require an approach that transcends borders. The growing world population, climate change, and the scarcity of natural resources. The great powers prefer to resolve conflicts and clashes of interest around the negotiation table. New great powers and important continents make their voices heard in the world arena and the UN Security Council. But the central point of departure is, what can we solve together? Because that is ultimately in everybody's interest. Most countries respect international agreements and codes of conduct. Security is jeopardized when countries do not stick to the rules or systematically infringe upon human rights. In those cases, the international community intervenes, if necessary, with armed force. There are also countries that are unable to guarantee the security and well-being of their population with all the ensuing consequences. Their development remains fragile. That is why a comprehensive international approach is applied to them to strengthen state capacity and bring security and well-being step by step. In the multipolar scenario, the world is divided into power blocks. The central question is, who has access to the power button? China, India, and Brazil manifest themselves as new great powers alongside the United States and the European Union, economically, but also politically and militarily. The most important security challenges in this scenario derive from the rivalry between the power blocks. They try to expand their spheres of influence without lapsing into a military conflict, but there is a chance that a small conflict escalates into a large-scale military confrontation. The power blocks compete with each other for the distribution of, and access to, more scarce oil, gas, minerals, and water. Their competition therefore unfolds in resource-abundant regions. Especially in Asia, the Middle East, and Africa, there is a lot of conflict potential, and Russia does not tolerate any interference in its Arctic Ocean. Political, ideological, economic, and military relations become more frosty. Global defense expenditures are on the rise. The power blocks invest heavily in their space programs. More states also possess nuclear weapons. 
thereby enhancing their power position in a tougher world. To keep afloat in this world, EU countries cooperate more tightly than ever. Through the EU, European countries attempt to defend their interests militarily. The Union often intervenes in the arc of instability to safeguard the transportation of fossil fuels, minerals and trade flows. It also keeps a sharp eye on the Arctic and on Russia. In the network scenario, the dynamics of the global market, big capital and technological development are the main drivers. The world's image is characterized by various global networks. A wide variety of actors are interconnected. Multinationals, trading conglomerates, megacities, philanthropists, international agencies, NGOs, private military companies, but also criminals and terrorist organizations. Complex financial, subcultural, ideological, virtual networks. Economic, political and military power within this open world system is so distributed that even great powers cannot impose their will. The networks care little for national boundaries. Many countries see it as their main goal to make their societies globalization proof, to facilitate improvements in well-being, and to maintain social tranquility in a dynamic environment. The world system generates ample opportunities for both individuals and groups. This spawns growing prosperity in many parts of the world, but economic booms are alternated with busts, and the network is vulnerable to sudden disturbances. Because of the system's complex and dynamic nature, events in one part of the world can have major consequences for the entire world. Some groups also resist the expanding globalization, at times even with violence. For many others, the key issue is to be well connected to the networks. Many security issues therefore affect groups and countries that failed to get connected. The friction between winners and losers presents a serious threat to our security, and the losers in the state system, the fragile states, form a sanctuary for terrorist and criminal networks. In the fragmentation scenario, the opponents of globalization have gained the upper hand, also in the political systems of many countries. The world image is characterized by polarization and radicalization, successive economic setbacks, political and social conflicts, natural disasters, pandemics and scarcity. Many people feel thrown back onto their own identity. They strive for as much autonomy as possible. European competitiveness and the level of well-being collapse as does belief in the market economy and in international cooperation. Driven by self-interest and the distrust between member states, cohesion erodes. In Europe and the Netherlands, political and social cleavages sharpen. Violence within societies is on the rise, and the integration of minorities grinds to a halt. This puts even more pressure on the social cohesiveness of modern Western societies. In many megacities, urban jungles emerge that can barely be contained. The most important security issues in this scenario are political violence and societal insecurity. And these are exacerbated because the state increasingly loses its monopoly over the use of violence. The decline in trust also triggers more conflicts between states. Many countries feel they can only rely on themselves and they arm themselves in some cases with weapons of mass destruction. Long-trusted alliances function insufficiently well. We are alone. These four scenarios sketch very different variations of the future, with a wide spectrum of consequences for the kingdom and its armed forces, with some being more desirable than others. But we can see ourselves in all of them. Precursor signs can be read in every day's newspapers. 
the real future will probably contain elements of all scenarios. That is why the policy options of the Future Policy Survey have been tested against every scenario. But there is still room for choice. Which choice will we make, as nation and as society? Will we intervene when problems reach our borders, or will we do so at their source? And what exactly is the contribution of the armed forces? To protect, to stabilize, to intervene? A bit of all of these? In which proportions? When all is said and done, the question is, what do we, the Netherlands, stand for? What do we find important? And what do we want to represent in the world? Who are we? Our armed forces are in the incarnation of our answers to all of these questions. And the Future Policy Survey helps our country and our armed forces to prepare for a different and uncertain future. To govern still means to look ahead. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow.